we're on Olympic Boulevard, and if you're an LA native or if you've lived here for any length of time, if you go a little bit east of here, about three miles, where Century City is now, used to be the 20th Century Fox lot, and there was the tank where they filmed a lot of Sea Hunt <laughs> that I, I remember. And so when you were just a kid and would, would do an episode or two with your dad and your brother, yeah. did, did you have any sense of, I, I guess, what I'll describe as environmental consciousness then? Oh, my dad did big time. You know, uh, Sea Hunt really turned him on to the sea. He wasn't a, a, uh, you know, a skin diver or anything before that show. Um, I think it was such a great, uh, you know, a great, um, you know, feather in his cap to be a wreck. You know, people thought when he, when Sea Hut came out, people thought that he was a skin diver. That you know, gave a few acting lessons. He pulled that part off. People thought he was that real thing. But he got you know so involved with uh, the health of the sea. And uh, remember, as a kid, that's. You know, that was kind of the beginning of my, uh, my care about the planet as well. Uh, and then a, a big fast forward and a, a really extraordinary life lesson about the, the, the power of nature, to, uh, for, I guess, for good and for ill. You've lived in the Santa Barbara Montecito area for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all heard about what happened there, but I was not necessarily aware of what happened to you. Yeah. What happened to you? There? Well, uh, you know, we knew there was going to be a, uh, a big uh, rainstorm after this enormous fire, the Thomas Fire. I think it was the largest fire at that time in California history. Uh, but uh, California has been particularly crispy this year, so I don't know, maybe it's been, <laughs> it's been kicked off the top. But anyway, um, we knew that there was going to be a big rainstorm, and we were concerned about, uh, you know, the flooding and we got sandbags and everything. <laughs> but that, that proved to be a, kind of a joke because what happened at about 3, 3.30 in the morning was that the whole side of the hill just came down and, uh, you know, huge rocks the size of, you know, cars, you know, and trees and mud. And uh, it was really, uh, really a devastating um, thing. And I can go into detail about all the, you know, how we dealt with it. Uh, but uh, basically, you know, we we were some of the fortunate ones. You know, we got rescued by helicopter. But, uh, you know, 22 people died because of it. But, um, yeah, that was, you know, first first-hand uh, experience to climate change. One uh, thing in, in uh, part of the film, you, you referenced the idea of, and I'm going to paraphrase, of looking under the hood yeah. of the way we think and act. So it, it, as you looked under the hood, and as the film looks under the hood, did, did you discover yeah. things that were different than, than what you thought? Yeah, well, when uh, uh, Susan and I, our director and photographer and the writer of the whole project, this is really her baby, when she came to me and wanted to know if I wanted to be involved and, and be a narrator of it, uh, I wanted to... Uh, ask her kind of what her angle was. I thought we had enough doomsday stuff out there, how dire, what dire straits we're in. And I didn't want to poo-poo those dire straits. But I wanted to, uh, I care about the planet. I really want it to be, you know, healthy. I want the beautiful planet for my kids to grow up, my grandkids, that sort of thing. And uh, I wanted to uh, do something that kind of added to to the uh, solution to this thing. And uh, a question that kept coming up was, why are we behaving the way we're behaving when we have all of this uh, scientific um, proof about uh, what's happening to our planet? And um, that was kind of the beginning. And then we started to think about uh, you know, the long view, which is not only you know, thinking about the future, but also looking back and thinking about how we, you know, as a species, how do we, how we uh, do what we do and why we do those things. And so we started to get uh, experts uh, from all different, you know, walks of life, part of the military, you know, guys, and there we got Wesley Clark, who was wonderful, and politicians, uh, <sighs> folks from, uh, you know, um, uh, indigenous folks giving their, uh, 
their point of view, get as many points of view on this thing, that almost like a hologram to have right. it you know, become sharper and sharper into focus. And, and, and are you able now to, to answer the question that the movie asks, why do we behave the way that we do? <laughs> well, a certain part of it is, is a mystery, but I think uh, because it was successful, you know, um, uh, you know, you hear that word, uh, a tribe coming up a lot. Now we're very tribular, you know, we got the Republicans and the Democrats really clashing. And that idea of tribes in the past has served our species quite well, you know, and family and being, you know, of, 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 you're of one unit and protecting against other units that might want to come in. But that kind of thinking is now kind of productive. Now we've got to think about how we can come together as a species and, um, and you know, move wisely into the future. There, there's a visual sequence I was really struck by, um, and I, Susan will explain to us a little bit later about nature photography, I suppose, but you're seeing you know, ants or uh, insects oh, yeah. of some sort. And it, it's how the insect community forms these, community, these cities, and then it kind of morphs into a picture, I don't think it's necessarily Los Angeles, but of, you know, the various cities and mega cities around. Did something like that just like blow your mind? That was, you know, one of the, the joys about being involved in this project is was educating myself. I, I learned so much. And one of the things that you uh, are talking about is one of my favorite things I learned is about emergent behavior, this uh, phenomenon that happens all throughout nature. You see it in uh, birds, you know, when they flock together or uh, schools of fish. And they're moving, they're forming a certain shape, and there's no leader. You know, why are they forming this shape instead of that shape? You know, what's going on there? And uh, it turns out that this is a phenomenon that happens all over through nature, and it's happening to us as uh, human beings. We also have this emergent behavior. And uh, yeah, it almost looks like a, you know, a mad ant you know, an anthill, that's one of the, a good way to describe what that emergent behavior is, is it's, it's an entity that's made up of smaller parts and they don't, it looks like they have nothing to do with each other. For instance, an ant, uh, you, if you just had an ant, you couldn't tell what an anthill is, but you get a bunch of ants together and they make this thing called an anthill and all kinds of stuff happens in, in that anthill and that's what happens with, uh, us as well as a species, and we've uh, spread now to uh, a rather dangerous uh, degree that we're kind of, you know, eating up our host almost. You know, this little speck that we're living on. Uh, you know, all this um, that that uh, fuel that's buried under the ground that's so precious uh, that's not going to last forever. You know, that's one of the frightening things about where we are now. Well, one other thing that that's talked about a lot in the movie is this notion of abundance. And I think a lot of us grew up with the idea, not without, you know, we all, all want to be stewards of the planet and everything, but that, that more is better. You know, yeah, I've right. got more stuff, it's better. And, uh, more is better. And uh, the movie takes a different, <laughs> you're chuckling at that. Well, I just say, you hear that, but you also, less is more. Less so. is more, right, right, right. You know, you hear, that's a common thing, yeah. you know, and you hear that all the time. And that's, you know, that can be really, uh, true, you know. We're not the, uh, you know, we don't always make wise decisions, but we have the capacity for wisdom, you know, and for flexibility, and, and you know, we're, we're, uh, we're nature itself, you know, we're, we're an expression of it, and we can change. One of the great things is that we can kind of uh, assess our minds. We, we, can, we can think in such a way that we can, uh, you know, become aware of where we've been, what our behavior is like, we want to still behave that way. Yeah, you, know, you look at like cigarettes, you know. Right. You know, how many, you know, that's something that we've slowly, people, you, there's still people are still smoking. Right. And we kind of allow, but people have just said, no, that's not a good thing. So you notice it's less, it's more expensive, cigarettes are more expensive. And, you know, it's I, a I, natural I, shrinking. I hate to admit this, I'm old enough that my dad used to give me the dollar fifty and send me to the drugstore to buy his cigarettes. A dollar fifty. Yeah. I remember when there were thirty-five cents. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you, you reference species, and I'll, I'll maybe this is a subspecies of sorts. Are there 
behaviors or, or lessons learned on a movie set? Is that oh, a group yeah. of, a troop of people? Oh, trying, yeah. Is that an anthill in and of itself? So much so. Yeah, I've often thought, gee, what is a great, uh, uh, an example of how the world c could work. You know, you've got all these different people from all different, uh, you know, walks of life, a lot of, you know, all leaning in politically different ways, all coming together to make something beautiful, you know, something meaningful for all of us. And uh, God, it's a wonderful experience when all of that comes together. And how rare is that? Because does it always come together as idyllic well, it, as that? It, it comes together, uh, all, you know, it usually comes together in some fashion. But what keeps me showing up is that every once in a while, you know, you got high uh, expectations going in, and then it gets together, and man, it transcends all your expectations, and it's just better than you ever thought it would be. You had, high, and that's kind of what can happen with the environment as well. That same kind of thing. I'll do the showbiz thing for just a second. Give me one or two titles where it came together like that. Where you thought, oh, wow. Uh, oh man. Well, last picture show. Uh, you know. Um, you know, uh, Lebowski, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I mentioned good, you know, just a bunch of good movies, you know, but, you know, Fisher King, you know, I could go, I got a pretty good, you know, you know you if you look in there, well, I don't know, you can name them, I don't right. know, I don't well, know. Do you, and I don't know, this is like not looking at the redheaded stepchild or something, are there some where you, th you thought it would come together and sort of didn't? <laughs> yeah, and the ones that I'm thinking like that are really heartbreaking, man. There are ones that, uh, you know, Hal Ashby, right? right a great, great master yeah, filmmaker, absolutely. you know, made the Herald of Maude, being there, coming home, great. Bo, my brother Bo, did his first movie, and I did his last movie. And um, my experience was, so, was sad because um, the financiers had no respect for Hal and how you know, what his methods were, and they were wild, you know, methods. When I put myself in the financier's brain, you know, I can say, oh yeah, I'd be concerned because Hal never shot the script. <laughs> you know, we would, what we would plan that day wasn't there, so they were looking, that's not it. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta look at the pudding that's coming out of that guy's oven. You gotta look at these master films that he's made with that, uh, you know, with that, technique that he had, and it was basically improvisation. It was so great. Uh, but, so this financier uh, fired Hal, didn't let him edit the film. Uh, he won the Academy Award for editing in the heat of the night with uh, Norman Jewis, and he was his guy, and uh, fired Hal and then proceeded to just cut the whole thing against the grain, you know, oh. and not make the movie that Hal wanted to make. And we had a wonderful time making it. It was Andy Garcia's first film, and I loved working with Andy. But it's, you know, it's a, it's, it, you know, it, it's a sad thing, because then Hal died shortly after that, you know. Uh, you, you, more so than, than many or most, I mean, I think it's a rare thing, to have so much great work over such a body of time. What? Do you have a thought as to why that is? Yeah, well, well, I've been, you know, certainly uh, the bed I was, uh, you know, born into, you know, my folks. Man, uh, unlike a lot of showbiz parents, they wanted all their kids to go into showbiz. They loved, my dad, you know, loved all the different, he loved all the different aspects of uh, making, loved this stuff that right. we're doing here, signing autographs, everything. And he wanted to turn his kids on to it, you know. So uh, it started, you know, very young, and uh, and I got all my, um, you know, my my instruction from uh, my dad and my brother, and so that probably had, you know, a lot. To do. I kind of, I feel it really an extension of my father, you know. Do you, his did, whole life. did he have a good picker, and do you have a good? Because I think that's, a part, good I think, picker? I, I think you have to have this this innate talent, and then you have to have to have an ability of what is well suited to oh, your talent. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, you know, it was not, not, not an anatomical thing no, or anything. No, 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 that triggered a, T, TMZ tomorrow. <laughs> like, uh, that triggered a lot of stuff. You know, my father was, a, you know, uh, he did all, you know, he was a you know, stage actor, comedian, dramatic stuff, all kinds of things. 
And when he got Sihan, as I said, he pulled that part off so well that people thought he was a skin diver. <laughs> and so not only the fans and stuff, but also the filmmakers. So he would get a lot of scripts, you know, skin diving scripts. To do. <laughs> and it was you know, wonderful for our family, you know, monetarily, but it was kind of a drag for him, you know, as far as what he wanted to do. Now as a young guy growing up, I saw him struggling with that. And so early on in my career, I really uh, decided that I, I really didn't want a strong persona. That, that really got in his way. So I would really pick films that were, you know, quite opposite from each other. Um, but my on, laying on top of that, uh, the way I, you know, maneuver the different uh, movies I make is I really try hard not to make any movies. <laughs> yeah, not to engage because I know what that means. You know, that means that I'm gonna have to stay away from my family, which, you know, that's probably one of my big regrets. From I've had a wonderful career, but I missed my kids growing up quite a bit, you know? So it means you're gonna be away from your family, be away from all my other interests, and I got a bunch of those. And then the, one of the big ones is, if I do this movie, well, maybe that one, I don't even know what it is, but it's coming down the track, I'll have to, not do that one because I'm doing this one. So I really try hard, I really resist until uh, I can't and it pulls me in. You know, I, have a, uh, I, I had a dream about it uh, that I made a painting of and in the dream I'm going down a, a, a river, uh, it's about the size of this room here, big cliffs on the other side and um, I'm in a little rowboat and there are these huge whirlpools, about, you know, about the size of this stage, and like this, and I've got to navigate down the thing. And in the vortex of each whirlpool is a gorgeous jewel. And I'll be in my rowboat, and I'll go, I go oh, oh, look. Oh, 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 oh I was close, you know. And then I'll see where I'm this high, go like this. Oh, I get, and I'm stuck, it's too late. And I, then I made a painting of that, oh, of wow. that moment. And the title, of the, uh, the title of the painting is, Jeff Makes a Decision. <laughs> that's, that's my decision making, but I'm trying to get through it. But if it looks something about it, ah, ah too late. So, so, people always seem obsessed with this. Are there, are there no's you have said that you regret now? No, no, not a one. Oh, not really? a one. No, and then the other way, you know, ones that I wish I could have done, that I got, nah, didn't, didn't, doesn't phase me that way. When, when did you first become aware, and this is a, a word that people use a lot nowadays, that you had a platform, that the fact that you had mm. uh, considerable talent and such success, uh, that people were interested in what you had to say beyond the yeah, roles that you played. Yeah, yeah, you know, as you asked me that question, it comes back uh, to my dad again and to my folks, because that was all of the wonderful, one of the wonderful things he likes about what being showbiz is. Mm -hmm. It means that you, you have, you can, you know, have a certain degree of uh, celebrity or fame, and when you're up there, then you can shine the light on different things that you want to bring people's attention to, like uh, our environment. I remember my my dad early on I must have been you know ten years old or something. He was, very excited, he brought back a, a book that he had found called The Family of Man. Do you remember that book at all? Any of you guys remember, you remember that book? And he said, this is it, we are a family. All of us are in this together. And that really you know, stuck with me and that's something that he, you know, he lived his life that way. Well, I, and it may not be this specific a demarcation. Do you recall the first time, I don't know, in whatever form, that, that that you expressed an opinion? That you were like, you know what? I feel very strongly about this. Wow. Expressed a public opinion. Yeah. Um, what comes into my mind, there's probably some earlier than this, but about 35 years ago, I got very involved with ending hunger. Right, I remember that. Trend. And I'm still very involved with that. Um, back in those days, 35 years ago, it was really about uh, ending world hunger. And uh, I, be, I was made aware of the enormity of the problem and, and uh, why it was in place. It, it wasn't because we didn't have food or money or know-how, we right. knew how to end it. What was missing was the political will 
and our politicians, you know, they're supposed to be our representatives, you know. So then it finally gets down. So what's the will of the individual? What is my will? And so, you know, it was asked, now that you know this is the conditions that's holding hunger in place, what are you going to do? Are you going to just say, oh, that's nice. Somebody else is going to do something? Or are you going to, you know, figure out something that can fit into your own life uh, that you can sustain until the till it's handled, you know. And so I'm in the show biz, I do this kind of thing. So I really started to uh, get into um, the subject of hunger like that and formed an organization called the End Hunger Network. And uh, we've now shifted our attention from world hunger to right here at home because now we, we have hunger has raised its head here once again. And we're focused even, as, finer focus on childhood hunger because that's something I think everyone can agree with and that's a great first step. Right. You know? So we're taking steps on that. And it's funny, now that you, you bring that up, is because so many of the, uh, uh, how, I, how I thought about uh, uh, making a difference and, uh, and uh, what the uh, ending hunger in our country and in the world, uh, comes a lot to, back into the environment, a lot of those same thoughts, you know. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, my heroes is Buckminster Fuller, mm -hmm. you know, Bucky Fuller. And uh, he has something that uh, it applies to our movie, Living in the Future's Past, which is a metaphor, by the way, of tuning into what's already here, because this is the future's past right here. And Bucky, uh, made a great observation. He said, you know, the oil tankers, these big ocean-going oil tankers, uh, the engineers were very challenged uh, with turning this huge ship with this big rudder. It took too much energy to turn that big rudder to make it efficient. So they came up with an elegant solution of putting a little rudder on the big rudder, right? <laughs> the little rudder turns the big rudder, the big rudder turns the ship. That little rudder is called a trim tab. And Buckminster Fuller says, this is a good example or a, a metaphor for how uh, individuals are connected with society, society and how we can make a huge difference, that we really matter. And on Bucky's uh, gravestone is, call me Trim Tab. That's what's oh, wow. engraved. And he says that we're all, in fact, trim tabs. You know, we think we're just one little guy, but we're all connected you know, to other organizations, or we can create organizations, and we can turn the ship. So, so back to that rowboat, and back to those jewels in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> what was it about this particular jewel? Uh -huh. And then we're going to bring uh -huh. Susan out in just a moment. Oh, what okay. was it about this particular jewel that made you think, God, i got to do this? Well, it was... <laughs> I'm hearing my dad, get my dad behind me to say, "Yeah, this is something we can do, man. We can make a difference." Go. I say, "Yeah, yeah, go, man." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how. That's how, Even as I mention him, I feel him and my mom <laughs> soaring in here. They're with us, you know. And uh, they say, "Yeah, yeah, good." And the idea with this movie, it's it's kind of bigger than just this movie. What we've committed to, or what we intend to do, is to create a curriculum for this to be taught in schools and to make other movies and to encourage kids to uh, video their discussions around it and, you know, get it, you know, finer focus. Is there, and I don't know if the movie necessarily advocates this, certainly the idea that we can all do something. Yeah. But does it narrow in on what those somethings are? Well, um, I don't know about narrowing in. I think, you know, you take that, um, that trim tab example, and there are so many wonderful organizations that are doing things to help our environment. You know, um, one that comes to mind, you know, I ask the producer, I say, you know, you got any water out there? They say, yeah, yeah, we got a couple of bottles. I say, oh, I don't want those plastic bottles, man. We're talking about our environment. That's those plastic bottles. <laughs> Lousy idea, man, you know? Terrible idea. They don't biodegrade. They just get real small. The fish eat it. You know, we eat the fish. It's a bad idea. Um, but so I belong to an organization called the Plastic Pollution Coalition. It's all about 
ending single-use plastics, like you know, plastic bags. I know straws now. They, you know, take, banning those. And uh, I came, I uh, came upon uh, pla uh, pasta straws, right? That I really like. Those are kind of nice. Um, but anyway, it's affiliating, you know, with organizations or creating your own organizations. Um, uh, you know, contributing, making a con contribution to an organization, that there is a place for that, and that does help, but it can also be part of the problem. You know, you can give like a hundred bucks, ah, I've scratched my guilt itch now, right. I've done my part, you know. It, I would like to encourage people to uh, find ways of contributing that are just kind of natural into their, into their lives. You know, like I make movies, so I do this. Might be some teachers that want to teach about it in their schools. Um, and, and if you just get, um, if you're interested in the topic, uh, and it's a, I can't imagine why, who wouldn't be interested in the topic of, you know, making our world a, a beautiful place for us to live, I think if you're, if you just keep educating yourself about this subject, uh, that the universe will come up and ask you to say, hey, you want to do this little thing? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, come on, just a little, yeah, okay, I'll do it. yeah. Did you, did you, I mean, I, I tell you what, I, I know that you talk the talk and you walk the walk. Do you hear the universe talking to you sometimes and directing you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when I got into the hunger thing, it was such an enormous problem. And I knew once I said, okay, I'm into it, you know that I would be asked, because there's such a need for heart and love, you know, it basically gets down to love, you know, love in the place. There's such a need for that, that I was afraid of people, they, oh, he's a guy who's doing stuff, hey, will you do my thing? You right, know? right, right. Oh, please do my thing, it's for, say, only 10 minutes, you know, and, then, and, they would pay, and that, would, and that fright, frightened me that I would be asked to do too much. Mm -hmm. So, I had those two things, you know, one I really wanted to uh, engage and the fear of engagement. And uh, I, so I gave myself a caveat. I said, okay, you're, you can engage, but you can also say no, and you can, you're going towards the light, you know, but you can just say, I can't, it's too bright, man, let me just. <laughs> but you're, that's where you're going, you know. And so I, I did that, and sometimes, you know, I'll be asked to, you know, do something that'll be too much for me for one reason or another, and I'll pass. Then there'll be other times when there'll be things that's a little too much, but it's just a little too much, and I'm going to, I'll do it, I'll stretch. And I do that, and <laughs> every time what happens, I get so high off it, man. I get, because I'm, I'm going, I'm going to where I want to go, you know, and it was a stretch, it was tough. It was like, you know, it's like doing a, a big challenging part in a movie or something. You take the risk and it worked out, you know, and it's like thing I was talking before when it, it, it exceeds your expectations, you know, and you say, oh, I'm glad I made that extra little thing, you know, that extra little And, 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 and let me ask you this, is it as, as, as satisfying as, as nailing, I mean, it's dumb in my head, obviously, addressing the hunger problem is more important. It than, is. Than, no, it yeah. is. It's more gratifying, right. more important. All this stuff is. And you know, that's, a, that's a funny thing that you, it, when you talk about that, it brings up talking about superorganisms. And it, as you were saying, that it brought up uh, bees. You know, bees are so incredible, you know, and they, they um, you know, they're all about going from flower to flower, getting the honey to feed their kids, you know. That's what they think is going on. It, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm a little anthropomorphizing <laughs> here, but you know, yeah, they say, oh yeah, we get the hunting of the thing. But what they're not really privy to is that they pollinate everything, man. You know, we, oh, come on. And uh, you know what I mean? And so in a weird way, I'm thinking, the acting thing is kind of like me getting honey for my kids, but the real, the real purpose for fame and celebrities to do this kind of stuff. You know, that's very well said. That's terrific. Yeah. So something uh, semi-magical is going to happen because a, a per the person is going to be Ted is going to do all this for us. Where Susan's going to appear. Please welcome to the stage, Susan <laughs> Thank 
<laughs> so Susan, we've heard his version. Oh. Tell us, you, tell us your version. No, it was, it was all him. <laughs> but, but, well, but in terms of uh, Susan, is very accomplished in all the stuff, and is the, the director of the, the movie that you've seen the trailer and for. The, and, the, and the cinematographer, and the writer as well, right? Well, we all wrote. There's not well, seven no, people. Yeah, you yeah. did too. But yeah. this idea, you know, a lot of people have good ideas, and a lot of people bring them to fruition, and they just have so many beautiful images. How did you get him? Hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, well, it is a bit of a story. Um, I have a very interesting executive producer. We did another film together, but it wasn't the film that he wanted, and he's still waiting for his film. He wanted a narrator for his film, and so we thought, okay, well, we'll go out and find a narrator, and Jeff watched this other film. He was very interested in the subject matter, um, but he didn't want to make a doomsday type of film that my executive producer was interested in at the time. And so we started from scratch, and we, um, we did FaceTime. Yeah. <laughs> he would call while I was, you know, <laughs> still in bed. <laughs> I, I live in Hawaii, and a time change, sure. and so <laughs> I thought, I, it, it would say, Jeff Bridges is calling, and I, I'd have like one second to decide whether I should answer. <laughs> <laughs> And we, um, it was very organic. We, we went back and forth. It took us two and a half years. Um, we, uh, our executive producer also brought interesting people to the table, as did Jeff, excuse me, Jeff and myself. And um, we just sort of wove it all together. And, it, and <clears throat> it's a very different kind of environmental film, and people are really enjoying it. And it comes out on October 5th. Yeah, and, and I just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, go out and see. It's so beautiful on the big screen. It's really good. And uh, that financier, uh, Jim Swift, uh, really thankful for yes, you know right. what he you know caused and his openness to you know not be so adamant. No, I want a doomsday you know thing. He was yeah. you know he's very open and I think he's appreciative of the way it's he likes it's it. Gone yes, I, I invited him to one of the uh, festivals and he said the best thing that he thought that he could have done in this situation was just to kind of let us do our thing. But he had, he had the original idea of the question, you know, why do we do what we do? So I have to, you know, he was, he was great. He got the well, ball rolling. Well, after that two and a half years, I'll ask you the same question I asked Jeff. Why do we do what we do? Oh, <laughs> well, that's what we explore in the film. We, we look at um, ourselves, we look at animals quite a bit. We're animals too. And we have a lot of things that go on in our subconscious that we are um, not quite aware of. And, and we are creating this shape together. But we also take a really hard look at energy because we're not the only animals that use energy. We look at energy flows. We look at, take a really hard look at fossil fuels, what they, what they have done for us. Um, how are we gonna make some kind of uh, uh, transition but in a realistic way? So it's, it's not a piece of fluff. <laughs> but it's, it's fascinating. I, I've seen it many, many times, and I'm still, you know, learning from it. Well, well, one of the things that uh, comes to my mind, you're talking about how people can get involved, and, you know, there's different organizations. One that is, we have a fellow uh, on our uh, movie here, Mark Plotkin, who is the head of an organization called the Amazon Conservation Team. And uh, he works with uh, 50 indigenous tribes in uh, South America, and they are protecting and uh, improving and uh, 80 million acres of rainforest. And that is so important because uh, you know, deforestation, I think that ranks second to um, just you know, using fossil fuels as far as what causes this greenhouse effect. And so you know, getting in line with an organization like uh, the Amazon Conservation Team. There's so many different organizations that you can link up to that are really making a big difference. Uh, Jeff indicated what I think he hopes the result is when people see it. What, what's your hopeful, um, hopeful um, result? Well, that's all amazing. I, for me, I am so painfully aware of every object that I interact with. And so like this little simple thing that Jeff did, having his water put in a glass, you know, and it's just little things like that. There's seven billion of us, and our desires and wants, you know, have created this sort of shape that we have. And if we shift our desires a little bit, 
Um, there, there's a great quote in the film by one of the philosophers, and he said, um, he said, philosophy isn't just something that's up in here. Uh, philosophy is everywhere in built space. And so you started thinking about that. You know, architects uh, create our world too. And so it's, it's just, it's a, it's, it's a nice film to start having a, a different conversation instead of just feeling like a stupid human. <laughs> well, we're gonna open this up to questions in a minute, but before we do, let's pretend that Jeff's not here for a second. Um, now, I don't know, maybe Kylie Jenner could have narrated the whole thing. <laughs> And you know you would have gotten more uh, Instagram. Is there a certain authenticity that Jeff brings <laughs> to this? This is well, Sam Rubin asked. Why does uh, why does the director think that uh, Jeff Bridges is a, is a better choice than Kylie Jenner? Sorry, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know what I mean. Because Kylie is doing the sequel, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> but 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 I would think it's the the exact person you wanted. Well, he's not just a narrator, right? I right. mean, he, he jumped into this whole project and helped sculpt it. So it is his film, too. And his voice is so commanding, you know, throughout the film. And it, he, he is the thread that, you know, weaves the whole thing together. And then, of course, he, he appears at the end. Um, but he, it, it was more than just a person's voice. All right, uh, Ted is he out here somewhere. Yes, um, I'll bring the microphone to you for questions. Please raise your hands. Just a reminder, questions around here typically start with a W or an H and sometimes a D. They are short. There is no such thing as a two-part question. And only <laughs> Sam gets to ask follow-up questions. Are you an Hi, my name is Ricardo Alberto. Uh, I was born and raised in Chicago. In the middle of winter, I'd watch your dad get a bathing suit and go diving in California. Oh, man, yeah. The sea hunt. So I came out to California, and I got a sailboat in King Harbor, and I go surfing a couple times a week. I think you had a, at what time you were, you were associated with water, you had a sailboat or, or some type of affiliation with the ocean. I don't know if you still have that affiliation with the ocean. Oh, I and, I, and I want to bring up the point that it kind of keeps me in tune with the ecosystem being in the ocean a couple times very a week. Mu very much so. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Uh, I live very close to the ocean now, so I see it all the time. And I know, and I, you, uh, you know, you got, you're a surfer, right? And I, I surf, and I haven't surfed in a long time. But I remember that feeling when you get out there. You know, whether you, it's like fishing. You know, whether you catch a fish, that's kind of beside the point. But you get out there and you're looking from a different angle. You know, and you see it in the shore there, and you're something about it. It's just a little a different shift, and it's uh, yeah, it's amazing. You know, and being with the dolphins. You know, we're, you know, this is their planet too. You know, it's wonderful. I have a question. Is there a White House screening of this documentary in the works? <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, we should, we yeah that's a good idea, man. Yeah, let's we'll definitely get into that. Hi, uh, Reg Holden. Question, it seems like the environment has been sort of top of mind since the 70s, and it almost feels like we've gone backwards where it's politicized and half the country doesn't believe in you yeah. know, climate change. Uh, so. Are we making progress, and, and if so, what's it going to take to really get us to a tipping point where we all go in the same direction? Yeah, that's a fascinating, good question. Uh, PR is such an interesting thing, you know, how you, how you sell something to the public, you know. And, uh, it, you know, it's interesting, you know, it's, it's almost like the feeling, you know, you're tapping, you're hitting the same thing all the time like this, people say it. They, Compartmentalize it. Oh, that's what they're doing there. So you got to find new ways of, of of tickling people's interest. You know, um, this film uh, does that to a certain degree. But I can't wait for get some kids involved, man. You know, that new blood that's you know coming at it from completely other ways. You know, other. That's what I'm I'm hoping for. But I know what you mean. Um, we it's slow. You know, it's uh, it's like an evolutionary kind of. Thing. But, are, but are you startled? Uh, I, I mean, uh, it just is so. When people are like, oh, climate change is made up. Yeah. Wait, wait, and people say, A, they openly say that, and then some people actually believe it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's not so surprising because haven't you been totally certain about something and then you were wrong? That happens, that shit happens, man. 
<laughs> you know, that's right, don't you think? I mean, it could be all wrong. Right. It could be all wrong. I'm just, you know, op you know, uh, operating, you know, operating from what I, what my understanding right. about what's going on. But um, yeah, you don't, you don't know huh? for certain. I mean, what do you think? <laughs> I have a lot to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> what's that? Well, let's let the next. Okay, here we go. <laughs> As you said, there are seven billion of us now. And the projections are that in the next 30 years, we'll go up to 9 billion, which is projected to be unsustainable. That's the limit. Yeah. And that overpopulation exacerbates every environmental problem, so but true. you never read anything about it. And certainly, it's countering evolutionary instincts to tell people not to reproduce. And my question is, do you have anything about that in what you're doing or in the movie or whatever? That's a good, that's really a good point. And I don't, I, yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, <clears throat> when we're showing the film, it's pretty obvious, you know, we're talking about the super organism taking over the planet. Um, but I always think of population also in one way. Um, I think people in the West consume <laughs> uh, the equivalent of maybe seven people living somewhere else. So we have to kind of remember that too. <clears throat> and, you know, what, what to say, like you say, it's very hard. It's a, we're not a very successful evolutionary species if we don't procreate, but yes, there's so many of us now. So it's something people have to think yeah, about. Yeah, and that's also something, yeah. Yeah, and that, I think that's a, really a good point and it's part of our, of the conversation about, you know, how to address that. I mean, yeah, that's, Big one. Um, Jordan from Los Angeles, born and raised here, and uh, philosophy major, Brown University. And my question is the difference, Susan, picking Jeff Bridges, do you believe possibly he is the, he wanted to speak on a philosophy and he is the narrator but the philosopher of, uh, of, the, of the, our new future, hopefully? I love his philosophy. <laughs> Um, he was just the exact right person um, to work with. Who, I <laughs> well, but because I, I, I think it, it's what I said earlier. I think it aligns with, with stuff that I feel you have talked about and you have lived for a long time. So that, that's, uh, I think, why. I, would you consider that a philosophy or, or what, with what? just the way, you, the, way you, the way you care about the environment, the way you behave, the way you act? Or is, it, or is it just intuitive to who you are? I don't know, we were talking about that in the car coming over here. If, if, if Electric car? No. <laughs> or, or on a horse, or horse and buggy. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but whether, you know, do we make, is, is, you know, this is a, I'd like to know what your philosophic <laughs> thoughts are on this. Is it really a matter of choice? Do we really choose things or? You know, did I really choose to be involved or did it go way back to my folks being born that way, being raised and it's just like a natural progression, you know? Or is there a, is there a choice involved? I don't know, that's, I don't know. What, is, what do you think, ph philosopher? <laughs> I like to believe philosophy is the study of thoughts. So possibly in your life, in Germany, in your style, of being an actor and a 25-year-old looking up to you, you have a way of thinking as an actor and moving on uh, as the film. So do you believe you think differently possibly after this two and a half experience with Susan? And is it something that young philosophers like yourself could adapt to our ways of thinking? Yeah, well, I, um, it was a, a, a very a learning process. I learned all about, you know, different things. The um, uh, the um, thing that uh, Susan talks about, and it's one of her favorite things, and I, I really enjoy it too, is this uh, orient uh, object-orientated ontology. Are you, you, you know, you're probably hip to that, you know, that the idea is that on, in a, you, you say it beautifully, in a kind of a, not thematic, oh. what do you say? What's oh, in the a word? theoretical world. In a world. theoretical <laughs> world, you imagine that everything is this, has the same value, like, you know, my head, this glass, your coat, every, you know, thoughts, different, everything is like, everything has the same value. And then if you start from that base, then you, you can notice what, what you bring to it, 
what I think is valuable. And you notice, you know, um, this glass of water is more valuable to me than your coat. You know, as a, as a practical matter, it may well be. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting right. just to notice how right. we how we you know bring energy. Unless you're cold, right, right, you right, right. There we go. There. <laughs> but you get into that. You like that. Topic. I like that. It's a, you it's like a yeah, good, yeah. It's a good tool. Yeah, now brain. talk about how that works with what we're up to with our fill. Well, I think it was just it was one of the aspects that we brought in. Um, we brought we brought all sorts of things in. Um, different scientists and including philosophy and this was just a very interesting way of looking at um, varying degrees of hypocrisy <laughs> uh, and how you can't see around every corner you can't possibly know all of the you know results of everything that you're doing and so you do your best um, but starting being honest about what your value systems are and what choices you're making right up front. It's it's a practice that you have to do every day. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, Where is Mr. Bridges, um, I just wanted to ask you a quick cinema question. Mm -hmm. um, kind of deals a bit with the environment as well. I always really respected the movie Starman. I think that when the hunters kill that deer, you bring that deer back <coughs> to life there's a certain intrinsic quality of you bringing that back. So I was just curious, what was that project like? Did you seek that out, Mr. Carpenter? How did it happen, anything? Yeah, it was pretty much a standard way coming through my agent and stuff, but a great opportunity. I really loved making that movie. I love that line that sort of uh, can be, it's applicable to what we're up to now when uh, the star man, uh, says to Charlie Martin Smith, you know, he says, uh, you, you know what I like most about you, human beings, is that when things are at their worst, you are at your best. And that really, that really rings through to me today as well. It's kind of you know, what, I'm, what I'm resting on. Do about two more questions and then... Great, over here on your right. Okay. Hey, uh, Jeff, um, my name's James. This is my wife, Melanie, we're big fans. Um, <laughs> I'm going to point out the obvious, but that's what I do. Sorry. I'm a, I'm a photographer, and I know that you're a really accomplished photographer, and I was always wondering if you uh, were th ever thought about taking that passion and like getting behind the lens and going, I'm going to shoot this other thing that I'm really passionate about. Because you're really great at, I mean, this whole room is just captivated by you. I just thought it'd be really great if you were, like took that passion and got behind the lens and just and see what we got. Yeah, you know, what, I, what I've what i noticed, because um, I've got a lot of those things I'd like to do. I, I like to um, do ceramics, I uh, paint, I play music, take the, uh, you know, pictures. And um, I used to get real mad at myself when I'd be in my hotel room studying for a role, a part. And I'll say, gee, yeah, that would make a really cool painting, man. I should do some painting now, and I get, and then I, I find myself I'd be, you know, making a doodle or a painting, and I say, no, Jeff, get back to work, you know. You, <laughs> and I used to be mad at myself, but then I discovered that when I start shaking up my creativity, um, all of the my creative aspects get excited, you know. And so I'll have, you know, a song will come out, or, you know, I'm thinking of a movie, Fearless, I did, where I playing this guy who's survivor of a plane crash as an architect. And I was studying one day, I said, no, I think I'm gonna go out and buy some art material. And I went out and I kind of did it as, a, uh, as a, uh, an improv with myself, a long improv. In character, I went out and I bought all this art supply, pa papered my hotel with it, and then just went crazy drawing all these drawings. And later that uh, morning, I was going to have uh, breakfast with Peter Weir, the director. And I said, I got to show you what, I, what happened to me last night. He says, what? I, so I brought him up to my room, and he saw all these paintings. Oh, this is going to be in the movie, you know. So then that was right. in the movie. Okay. That's happened with music and so many. It's all, it's all together. You know? But did you, I tell you what, and, and maybe this is, uh, addresses our earlier question about career longevity. I think a lot of people don't pursue all their various creative interests because they tend to, oh, I'm, I'm good at this or I'm successful yeah. at this or I'm rewarded for this, so I'll yeah. leave that other stuff behind. Yeah. I think that's interesting that, that you 
rather vigorously pursue all of them. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I mean, it's an interesting subject. So many different things pop into my mind, but it's that Zen thing of beginner's mind, too, you know. Uh, most of us don't like to do things we're not good at, you know, and so um, you're, we're, you know, we're cutting a lot of enjoyment out of our lives by that because that beginner's mind, that, that freshness, you know, God with acting, man, that's, that's, that's a big thing, you know. Is it fresh to you still? Because it, it, every role's different or? Yeah, 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 it's, I still, it's, it's interesting, you'd think after all these years, you wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have flop sweat, and I, I still have all of that stuff, and, uh, and that, um, you know, the, the, um, you know, the challenges always get back to that zero, you know, that emptiness where something fresh comes out of, it comes out of nowhere, you know, just, apparently, you know, just boom, you know, and so you want to get back to that that zero place or that beginner's mind place. All right, final question for Jeff Bridges. Hi, uh, my name is William Turner. Um, first of all, Jeff, I have to say, uh, your dad was the only person I ever wrote a fan letter to. Uh -huh. <laughs> when I was about Good. 10, I did a drawing of him when he was on the cover uh -huh. of TV Guide. Had a chance to meet him when I first moved to LA. He could not have been more gracious. Yeah, he and, you know, way. and like any parent, uh, you know, sort of our, our, our parents' age, immediately was asking me, "What do you do? What do you brings you to LA?" And so on. Could not have been nicer. So it's nice to hear you talk oh, about good. him so much tonight. Oh, good, good. Thank you. Um, yeah. I've also yeah. uh, had the pleasure of working with Ted. Uh, and Ted, thank you for bringing so many great conversations to LA. So my question is, who is your audience for this film? I've been talking to some friends of mine about doing an a, a environmental film as well, and we really debated, is it the public? Or is it the legislators who can actually change policy and so on? And I thought after Inconvenient Truth came out that we would, uh, case closed, argument made, and then we still hear Chinese hoax and, and so on. So did you think about who your audience was for this film, which I'm very excited to see? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think this gentleman said the White House, you know, President Trump, he, we could, like, he'd be a good person to show it to. Um, and like, and as I was saying before, you know, our dream is to create a curriculum and, and show this in schools and do more movies and keep it, go, keep it going. And so I think that's, you know, but, the, you know, the audience, is every, it's everybody, but... Um, you know the kids. I'm I'm very excited about uh, what what they're what they'll come up to. You know, and yeah, and you know, just about everybody. I mean, it's I can't think of a person who wouldn't be with somebody who ought to say it. I don't, what do you think? Yeah, well, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll we'll tell you this: if you if you uh, hunger for more with Jeff, uh, happily he's on our uh, KTLA Morning News on Thursday morning, so you're all obligated to watch that uh, <laughs> forevermore. Um, I tell you what, what a really, uh, this all went too quickly. Uh, thank you both so much. Congratulations. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, guys.